the five levels of jazz improvisation. Improvisation in music is the act of spontaneously playing something that hasn't been previously planned or composed. In fact, in many ways, it is simply composition sped up. Some people find the idea of any kind of improvisation to be pretty intimidating, but I think that anyone can learn to do it because it's something that you do all the time. When you tell a story or have a conversation and you haven't pre-written or memorized what you're saying, you're improvising. You've probably got some broad ideas in mind that you're trying to convey, but it's not worked out ahead of time. You're just talking. You're able to draw from your massive vocabulary and compose sentences on the spot that make sense and convey meaning. Conversely, in music, there are only a few notes to choose from, so it should be a lot easier to play something that makes sense and even sounds pretty good. But if you're in a band, and it's your turn to take a solo, and you're just supposed to make something up, how do you do that? Now it should go without saying that anything you play should be in time, in tune, and with a good sound. That's just basic musicality and control of your instrument. So you just have to choose what notes to play and what rhythms to play. And in my experience working with new improvisers, rhythm is not that big a deal, while notes tend to be far more mystifying and intimidating. So that's what this video is going to focus on. And how you do decide what notes to play depends on how far you've progressed in what I think of as the five levels of improvisation in music. And while the levels are sequential, they're also cumulative, and even sort of loop around on each other. And while the progression of complexity is probably what you would expect, the role of intuition may not be. Level one is all about playing by ear, and it's basically 100% intuition. There is a rare species of musician who are natural improvisers. They engage with the music fearlessly and seem to effortlessly come up with brilliant musical ideas, but maybe don't know much about chords or theory. Some people never get out of level one, and they don't need to because they sound awesome. Most of us aren't so lucky and need a bit more study and guidance to improvise well. But everyone still needs level one because there's nothing more important in improvisation than using your ears. And basically everyone has some intuitive understanding that some choices in music are very consonant while others have a lot of dissonance or tension. But tension and dissonance aren't necessarily bad. In fact, the balance between tension and release is really important in music. And you may notice how some notes want to go up to resolve, while others sound more satisfying when they go down. And if you're not sure how to resolve a tension, you should know you're only ever a semitone away from a resolution to a tension. With practice and experimentation, you'll learn to hear and resolve these tensions quickly. But I do think it's important to remember that there really are no objectively right or wrong choices here. There's no forbidden or brown note that's going to make something explode if you play it wrong. It's a bit like deciding what to have on your sandwich. Some choices are going to be more traditional, while others are going to be more adventurous, but you do you. Sure, you could burn the toast, and most people won't like that. But the analogous situation to that is more like playing out of time with a poor sound rather than an objectively bad note. So, fill your ears. Improvising musicians need to listen to bands and soloists from genres that they want to play to try to figure out what kinds of sounds fit and what don't. And back to sandwiches, it's a bit like learning what kinds of things usually go well together. And if you mix it up, well, it really depends on your own tastes if you find it interesting or just kind of weird. So, try a note and see if that works, and go up or down a semitone if you need to. Then try another note, and before you know it, you'll have tried all 12 pitches and probably come up with a pool of notes that sound pretty good. And all of a sudden, now you're in level two. Level two, use a scale or key. Most songs are made up of a variety of chords, but more often than not, these chords are going to be related to each other because they all tend to come from one key or scale. For instance, all these songs all have chords that come from the key of G major. So you can just use the notes of the G major scale to improvise and whatever you play is going to sound probably pretty good. Depending on the type of song you're playing, you might find another type of scale works well. But level two is basically about having an awareness that you can often just use one scale to guide your note choices for improvisation and it's going to sound pretty good. Now, since this is level two, it really helps to know a little bit of music theory, like knowing the basic pattern of major scales and how that pattern relates to different kinds of minor scales and to other kinds of scales. Check my channel for videos about these scales if you need to brush up on anything. 
And I even did one on how to learn all your scales in all 12 keys in just 24 hours with a really powerful practice technique and method to track your progress. Check the description for links. But in the meantime, don't panic because you don't need to know all these scales to get started. You only need to know the scale you need to know to improvise on a specific tune. So how do you know what scale to use? First, your teacher or someone else in the band who knows all the chords might be able to tell you what scale to use. Or use those ears that you developed in level one. Just listen to the song and experiment until you figure out what notes and scales work best by process of elimination. There are only 12 notes to try and 12 possible major scales they can fit into. And you can probably figure out what scale works if you just try. And actually, if you've put the time in to learn all your scales really well, you can figure out what key you're in really, really quickly, because certain notes only fit in certain scales. Like, if C doesn't work but C sharp does, you can rule out a whole bunch of scales. And then you only have to check a couple more notes to quickly narrow down your options to just one scale. This might seem a bit mystifying if you don't know your scales well, but this is just one of the many superpowers you gain by learning all your major scales. More info on that in the description as well. Some songs will modulate to different keys, but it's the same idea. Figure out what scale works in what section, and you'll have a pool of notes to choose from at any time that are going to sound pretty good. And even jazz, which tends to be really harmonically complicated with lots of different chords, can even be thought of in terms of level two. That is, different groupings of notes that combine to create various key centers. And when you're comfortable with that and ready to move to a greater level of detail, that brings us to level three, chord theory. Now, instead of just thinking of a key that a piece or section is in and using an appropriate scale to improvise, you're actually paying attention to what chord is being played at any given moment and what scales and arpeggios work best over that specific chord. If you're playing the blues, rather than just using the blues scale, level three would require knowing the arpeggios and scales of all the specific chords used in the blues and trying to incorporate those notes into your improvisations during those specific bars. The blues generally only has three chords to worry about, but this is fundamentally a much more detailed, higher resolution understanding of how to navigate improvising over a piece of music. And depending on the tune, you might have quite a few different chord changes to consider. This is a big project because every chord type, and this is just a few, transposes into 15 keys and has its own arpeggio and scale type, as well as notes that we tend to classify as tensions, which sound pretty good, but you know, have tension, and avoid notes, which sound dissonant and should generally only be used as passing tones. Level three improvisers also consider voice leading and guide tones as they move between subsequent chords and often try to highlight those harmonic changes when improvising, such as in the blues. To give you a sense of the difference between level two and three, here's two choruses of me improvising on the blues, first in level two, then level three. Level three is a big jump in detail, and we're going to do a deep dive on all these topics and more in subsequent videos. So be sure to subscribe so you don't miss them. But for now, just remember that you don't have to learn every chord and every key to get started in level three improvisation. You just have to learn the chords in the song you're learning. And if you'd like to have a conversation about these or other musical topics, I teach lessons online. I play trumpet, but I've coached musicians who play all kinds of instruments about all kinds of musical topics. We can work on improvisation, rhythms, sight reading, repertoire, or whatever you like. Visit my website, bradharrison.ca, for more information. And if you'd like to support this and future videos, please consider becoming a member of my channel or joining my Patreon. One of the perks is access to a huge scale syllabus and a set of play-along practice tracks designed to help you learn all your scales in no time. A bunch of different scales have already been published and more are on the way. Check the description for links to become a member. Level 4, Substitutions. At this level, in addition to being aware of what chord is being played and what arpeggio and chord scale is indicated, you're also considering substitutions and alterations to add even more color to your improvisations. If you're looking at a major seven chord, there are a few options, each with their own interesting sound. But dominant chords surely have the highest number of common substitutions, and there are probably even a few more that I've forgotten here. We'll get into the details in other videos, but here's an idea of what some of these sound like. And 
you can even get into what is known as sidestepping or playing outside the key, which is basically what it sounds like, playing notes that aren't in the key. There's a lot to explore in this topic, but a good way to think of it is playing something in A key, just not the key that's being played at the time. Options for chord and scale substitutions are nearly limitless, and it really does bring us back to the idea that there are no right or wrong notes, only bolder or more conservative choices. And you get to choose what kind of sounds you think are appropriate for the music you want to play. And finally, that idea brings us right into level 5. If you've gotten here, you've been on a journey. You've learned how to listen and how to play by ear, how to improvise in a key, how to choose scales and arpeggios that fit the chord of the moment, and how to add substitutions to add more harmonic color to your improvisations. Level 5 is the combination of all of these, applied in a new way that is primarily concerned with tension and release. And, as we alluded to earlier, this level is highly intuitive, and it can be because of all the work you've done to get here. If you were to ask an improviser on another level what they were thinking while they're playing, they can usually offer a reasonably clear explanation appropriate to their level of progress. But in my experience, truly advanced improvisers sometimes struggle to answer such a question with any level of specificity because they're wielding so many different improvisational tools. They're so free from their instrument that the ideas just sort of come out. They're just trying to get from one harmonic point to another. Tension and release is really paramount in music, and really in most art in general. And going on this journey of learning through these different levels is going to inform your choices in ways that are difficult to describe. Now I'm not going to demonstrate level 5 because that sort of feels like the height of hubris. But be sure to listen to all the great improvising musicians, and you'll find plenty of examples. Please let me know in the comments what you think about improvisation and any questions you might have. And get in touch with me if you'd like to work on any of these things in a lesson. I'll be releasing videos digging into the details of jazz theory later this year, so be sure to subscribe too. Thanks to all my supporters on Patreon and all the members of my channel here on YouTube. I truly appreciate the support. Please consider becoming a member if you'd like to support the channel and help me make these videos more frequently. Thanks for watching.